So I'm going to give you a brief introduction about the evolutionary structure optimization method and its applications to architecture design. The evolutionary structure optimization method was developed by my team in the early 1990s. The idea is, is actually very simple. If you want to design a better structure, you can actually start from any, any initial shape and gradually remove the inefficient material from the structure. And the, the remaining material would form the optimum design. And the method is very easy to understand and easy to implement. It can be linked to um, most of the existing structure analysis software packages and the tools architects use like Rhino. I, I give you a very simple example of the ESO method. Say we have a structure like this. Under gravity, I fix one point on the top. And what I want to know what would be the best shape to, to um, suit this given loading and boundary condition. So we can divide this initial design domain into small bits and, and pieces. These are called the finite elements. And using this um, technique, we can find the stress distribution very, very easily. So we would notice that the stress at the four corners of this initial structure is zero. So that indicates that these uh, corners, the materials at, in these regions are not effectively used. So we can remove these inefficient material step by step. And we would see this uh, evolutionary process. So every time we are removing the elements with the lowest stress, and gradually we will get a new design. If we compare the initial design and the final design, we will notice that the original design has different colors throughout the whole structure. And the final design we are getting is a, is a design with uniform surface stress. So depending on the rules we use, we would get different designs because we have many different um, design constraints or objectives to look at, and we, we could use different rules to achieve these different objectives. And later on, we have uh, um, improved our technique. So not only can we remove the inefficient material from the structure, we, we can strengthen the most critical part in a structure by adding material to these locations. So the bi-directional ESO piece would be far more robust and efficient. And a simple example of BISO is given here. Say, if we want to design a bridge type of structure, I give the boundary condition here, it's simply, su simply supported at the four corner bottom. I have uniformly distributed load and leave a gap in the middle because that's a bridge. And the initial design can be very simple, a slab with four columns. And all the rest can be determined by our BISO algorithm. So the algorithm would add and delete material according to the structural requirement. So if we look at this uh, process, we are not making local um, small changes to the initial design. The process has fundamentally change the structure concept of, um, of the design. So we are getting an arch bridge with additional members so that the whole structure would have quite uniform stress distribution to make it efficient. And apart from being uh, structure efficient, we also notice that the outcome of our mechanical rules is very beautiful as well. It, very, it looks very organic and resembles a lot of things we see in nature, like the trees, seashells, and others. So I think that's, that is, that's the reason behind the, the appeal of this simple technique to the architects. So not only can we use it to reduce the weight, we can create very elegant structure designs. So some of the um, um, structures designed by using the extended ESO method are given um, here. I just select a few. 
This one is by Professor Omori from Japan for an uh, office building. And this was done around 2004, I think. And another example is um, designed by um, famous um, Japanese architect Asazaki with uh, Sasaki and uh, colleagues um, in Qatar. This is a Qatar Convention Center and the form was found using the extended ESO method. These are some of the photos of the uh, structure and I think it was completed around 2012. And I, sh I show you how this can be achieved using the BISO method we have developed. So if we fix the two bottom uh, parts and put uniformly distributed load um, by gradually removing the inefficient material and the adding material to the critical locations, we would see this process. And uh, after like about half an hour on the computer, you would see an uh, outcome like this. And there are uh, many other examples. This one is also by, uh, by Asazaki, um, a, a structure in Shanghai. These forms were found using extended ESO method as well. Um, my team has worked with uh, various architects um, to apply our uh, BISO method for uh, uh, different structures. This is a, a footbridge in Suzhou, China. This, the initial design is an enclosed tube and by removing the redundant material on the tube, not only can we get a, a very efficient structure, and it also provides a very clever and innovative uh, design as well. And this is a, a footbridge we, we designed in Melbourne um, in collaboration with an architecture firm uh, locally. Um, this is a, a one to four scale prototype of a section of the bridge I just showed you. So six identical pieces we can cast in the lab and connect them um, through bolts and nuts. Um, this is a, a recent uh, bridge we designed uh, for uh, China as well. Um, again, starting from a tube and by removing those inefficient materials and redistribute them into the critical locations, we can come up with such a beautiful and efficient structure design. This is another view of the same bridge. And there's many other applications of the uh, topology optimization method we have developed. So these are some examples um, done by my students and uh, team members. Um, these are some of the chairs. And the, the one here, it's actually, it's not a, a, a computer, it's a, it's a photo of a real um, chair, 3D printed. Um, these are two tables my student made for me. So if you have a chance to come to Melbourne, please do come to visit me. So these are the, the chair uh, tables designed using our technique and laser cut and assembled. And we have many other students who, who played with our technique. There's two undergraduate students, two girls, and learned how to use our software within a, a day or two. Um, they, were, they, they were able to design the high heels for themselves and 3D print it um, like this. This is another um, student project. So using our BISO technique and um, by redistributing the material, he was able to design a wooden pavilion like this. And um, another student applied the technique to design an uh, unmanned aircraft. So we, have, we can just put the material anywhere in the design region. And by applying the, the forces on the four propellers, considering different loading conditions, we can come up with the design and the whole airframe is 3D printed in one piece. And uh, we did some test flight, it flew very well and it's very light and strong. And um, we have implemented our BISO technique in a, a very popular software package called Amoeba. Um, because we work with many architects, so we have uh, developed on the platform of Rhino Grasshopper 
and all the computation is done on the cloud. So these are some of the examples we can, we can do using our simple Amoeba software. You can search on the net for Amoeba. Um, you would find us, um, find all the um, information and the free downloads. And next I'm going to show you a very short uh, video about um, what Amoeba can do and the, um, the examples. So these are some of the uh, examples from, from the Amoeba and um, I'll start the video next. Thank you. 